Okay, thank you. Uh, here at Eastern Illinois University, we try to look at it in terms of uh, setting up the training in a standardized format. Uh, we also have basic and advanced. Those are actually uh, conducted by uh, people that are part of a group called TechNet. I mentioned that earlier. Volunteers from across campus who have gone through some kind of standardized approach for um, getting that training and then developing it. We all work from the same uh, manuals uh, and what we set up. We try to uh, uh, personalize it in, on campus and try to bring in examples. We also, uh, so we have beginner and advanced. We also have one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, that uh, we find that we really need. A lot of those follow up. Uh, we try to make sure that everybody understands that um, one of the values of, of doing this is that they will have that support. Uh, and then we um, also put all of our materials online, all the kind of training that we do at, in our, uh, through CATS and through TechNet uh, are always available to them. I think the big part of it too is, uh, like I said before, the, um, uh, the training I think is one component sometimes that people really do not understand the value of it and that it, uh, it um, so we, we try to get a mixture of people in there and we really encourage people to come back more and uh, come back often and as many times as they want to so they actually get a chance to um, um, experience, uh, have the whole experience. Well, I don't want to say we took a little different approach. Uh, we made a conscientious decision that we were going to outfit every classroom that we could with the technology. Uh, without knowing for certain how many faculty we were going to have use this technology, we wanted to make sure that whatever methodology we chose for training was very consistent. And so we made a conscious decision that all of our, our training this year would be at the introductory level only so that we knew that everybody saw exactly the same thing so that when you talked with your peer, you were talking about the exact same things. Now, that doesn't mean that we didn't have faculty, one which is sitting here, going outside that box on a regular basis. But the bottom line is we knew across the board that all of our faculty were receiving exactly the same training and building that, uh, that peer relationship. And within some of our colleges, that's been very important to us. Okay, great, thank you. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the next uh, item, number six faculty buy-in strategies. And gentlemen? Um, I'll be happy to start. Um, it was actually a fairly easy buy-in for, for many people because uh, Roslyn Franklin University consists mostly of a medical school and a podiatry school where attendance is not mandatory. So anything that the professors could do to encourage participation in class, to get students to come, um, and to use a system that will be able to pull the audience, especially when posed with clinical questions, uh, was was very attractive to a lot of a lot of the faculty. Some of the faculty were a little bit more difficult to convince to buy in, um, and uh, the one-on-one -on -one sessions do help out with that. If you're able to individualize it and make it personal, uh, and actually develop scenarios where they can use it in their own class uh, designed with their content material in mind that also helps out a lot if you can give them a sample lecture in pathology and and show them how that would work out it's a fantastic fantastic uh, buy-in thank you mike uh, <clears throat> in terms of the way we approached it on this campus was uh, buying the systems uh, initially we bought 10 sets for the campus uh, with the idea that um, we'd make them available to all faculty and staff to, uh, and students to be able to use them. We found that to be valuable though and, and not only in terms of having the resources available but, but also giving them a chance to uh, work with them and, and experiment with them and see what they like. We set up a series of uh, presentations across campus uh, whether it was in a centralized place or in the particular colleges to demo the equipment and uh, we also tried to provide as many examples as we could, but we probably could do a better job with that, some um, specific ones for their disciplines. On this campus, we, we spend a lot of time trying to get feedback uh, from the faculty. They get an opportunity to uh, provide us information from the surveys. Uh, once we did get some people identified who wanted to be the users, they were assigned uh, to their, their specifically to them, and they could use it in their classrooms. Uh, we set up user groups uh, that allowed the opportunity for the faculty to continue talking with each other and giving us feedback about the product. And then I, the other thing that I forgot to mention was that uh, uh, when, a, when a faculty member does go through that and gets the system, we just don't put them out in the classroom. They've gone through the training, hopefully, and we also provide support for training their students and using the systems if they request it. 
Hmm. We really we really didn't have any problem with uh, faculty buy-in. Uh, we have 102, course, 102 <coughs> courses that used clickers last semester and again this semester. Uh, and all we did really did was to go out and demonstrate it uh, in a number of different venues and then let uh, nature sort of take its course. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you very much. Um, and now we'll move on to um, testing of systems. So in relationship to your experience, we might as well just continue in the same order. It seems to be working well. Um, okay, that's, that's absolutely fine. Our testing of systems wasn't formalized, basically. We had no, we had no policy for testing the systems. Basically, um, either myself or someone, out, uh, someone else in the curriculum department would go out to the individual classrooms make sure that the system worked um, and we had the implementation was fortuitously over a vacation it was over spring break so we were able to have empty classrooms with no students we ran all the clickers made sure that they worked um, and now IT our IT department is in charge of that and so the system is checked regular annually basically we have a policy to institute regular annual checks okay. for all our classrooms I think one of the things that we <clears throat> we were looking at, especially when we were moving from the infrared systems to the radio frequency, is we wanted to make sure that we weren't we were going to try to minimize as many problems on campus in advance as we could. And uh, obviously, you can't eliminate all of them, but we wanted to make sure that we did get the buy-in from the campus. One of the first things with doing that was we did work with our ITS department, and uh, they they went through the Ohio State report, they read through the literature, they uh, sat down with us and talked about it. Similarly, uh, the, the people from Media Services also worked with us in making sure about the setups in classrooms and how this would be affected and the different channels that we would be using. And then uh, what we tried to do was really document going through a systematic evaluation with on the buildings on campus. Uh, we actually went uh, to make sure and, and went through each building, setting up uh, simultaneous uh, uh, user sets in, uh, in the building on different floors, uh, using different channels and, and at least trying to, and, Part of that was to see whether it was going to be interference, and the other part was whether it was going to be any kind of blockage in the way we were setting things up to, to use them for sharing points. So. We did quite a bit of testing uh, before we did the install. We did our install last summer to the 100 plus classrooms that we have. Uh, we had several technical people on campus kick the thing around, really try to see if there was anything that would break as a result of adding the software. Once we got past that challenge, then it was just a matter of having our staff install the software in every one of the classrooms. If you're not familiar with this Ohio State uh, plan that Michael uh, mentioned, uh, I strongly recommend it. Uh, these devices do work within the same spectrum as the wireless access points. Uh, and while this report suggests that, the, or can't prove, disprove really, uh, problems within that spectrum, um, you know, uh, a little preventive maintenance uh, is really worth the time. So uh, in our case, what we did, knowing that we were going to roll this out to 100 classrooms, we took drawings of every building uh, and spent hours going over those, trying to lay out channel configurations so that we could stay within those top uh, 18 or whatever the report says, 66 to 82, um, and, and keep all of our overlap channels as far away as possible. Uh, our goal being to make sure that we could say to the faculty, we've done everything we can to make sure that your success in the classroom is protected. Uh, so we spent an awful lot of time with that. Uh, the other thing that we do is that we also uh, have a student army that checks all of our rooms every morning. And um, while they're not currently uh, testing the turning point, they do check that the computer's running, the network connection is all there. Uh, and in the future, they will also be carrying a clicker and, and being, doing some of those testing as well. Very good. good. Um, what I'd like to do uh, is go ahead for, with our time allotment here and field some of the questions that we've collected from the audience. If we did not get to one of the items that you had hoped we discussed, at the end of the answering of questions, if there's still a few minutes, I'll go back up to the slide set and we'll finish with the fourth. Otherwise, I encourage you to seek out uh, any one of these three gentlemen during dinner tonight or cocktail hour and uh, ask them specifically about the item that you, that you are most interested up there. Um, but the first question comes to us is uh, for those of any of the three of you that uh, would like to comment on, or if you have WebCT at your particular school, um, how do you intend to incorporate the use of Turning Point into WebCT and or how can this be done? Interesting. So does Rosalind Franklin uses desire to learn, so okay. we don't have WebCT. Well, talk about it from a desire to learn perspective. Sure. 